welcome back to the online learning channel. So remember in my first two videos, I did English week one and two for grade five. So today I'm going to be doing English week three and four for grade five. So I'll start off with listening and speaking, go on to reading and viewing, then uh, language structures and then writing and presenting. So for this two weeks, we have a certain theme. So the theme is informational text. Remember an informational text is something that's real. So I'm now going to go on to start the presentation with the PowerPoint and also just a reminder while I'm getting that ready. At the end of this video, there will be another video that's posted where we're going to be running a competition. So this competition will be for my kids, which is you. To enter this competition, answer questions based on all my videos and you could win a prize. It's a cash prize, so the money will be transferred into your parents' account, same time that you, that we decide on who the winner is. Okay, so let's go on with my lesson, right? So remember, we're keeping into the theme of informational text. So let's start. Okay, so the first section of the video will be dedicated to listening and speaking. Remember, listening and speaking, then reading and viewing. Okay, so my focus and objective for this is for listening and speaking to listen to and discuss an information text. So I am going to read one to you. So um, after we've done that, you're going to uh, take all that into account and you're going to prepare a speech for me in my worksheet activity that I will give to you. Okay? For reading and viewing, it's very, very easy. You're going to read an information text. So this will also be in my worksheet, which will be in the link below the video. You, uh, your parents can access it and download it for you and you can answer my comprehension questions based on it. Okay, so let's move on. What is an informational text? Okay, it is the word informational gives us a hint on its own. Information. Information is getting facts, real, real things, real information that's true about something. For number one, example where you'd find all these informational texts in non-fiction books. Remember, a fiction book is made up. A fiction story is not real, it's fiction. A non-fiction book is something that's true and real. Good. Then we have newspapers. We read newspaper articles every day, whether it's physically in the newspaper, whether it's online on the news channel, news Facebook page, blogs, posters, menus, brochures, and flyers. So all those things have real information. Okay. And they can also contain pictures, a chart, a graph, a diagram. Remember, all these things are text features. It helps us to enhance the quality of the information text that we're going to read. Okay, next we have the types of print. So what types of print we could find in an informational text? People could use underlining, bold writing, highlighting, italic, capital letters, colored words, and so on. Okay, let's move on. Before we go to our listening and speaking task, before we even read the story, what do we do first? We use prediction. Prediction is predicting what can happen. So in this case, we use prediction from pictures. So look at the informational text that you have in front of you. Look at the pictures. The pictures will tell us what the story is about or what to expect in the story. Beside the pictures, we could use the title. The title will give us an idea of who or what the story is about. After we've done that, we're going to go into a discussion where you give your own opinion and relate the story to your own life. And then cause and effect. Remember, cause and effect is in every informational text. It's what happened, that's the cause, and then the effect. Why and how it happened, or who did it affect, right? Let's move on. So now I have the example of the information text in front of you. So I am going to read this really quickly. I'm going to go through it. If I do make any mistakes, I do apologize, right? So before we read, remember, our first thing we should do is prediction. Let's look at the title first. Blue whale. So the story is about whales and the color is blue. And the pictures will tell us the exact same thing because there's three pictures of whales. Right? Let's go on to the story. Do you know what the largest mammal ever to inhabit our planet is? If you said an elephant, you are wrong. Look up at the top of the page. That's right. Blue whales are the largest mammals ever to be on Earth. Want to know more? Keep reading below. Blue whales are big. They can get between 70 to 80 feet in length. The longest one ever recorded was 106 feet long. Get a ruler out and measure that. 
blue whales can weigh as much as 90 to 150 tons. With a body that big, you might think that whales eat other big animals. Actually, these enormous mammals eat tiny organisms like plankton and krill, which they filter through their baleen plates. Baleen plates are filters that are in place of their teeth. A blue whale can eat up to 7.715 pounds of krill. Krill are small shrimp-like creatures per day. Blue whales are found throughout the world's ocean. These gentle giants have grayish blue skin with light spots. They live in small groups called pods. The number of blue whales in the world ocean has dropped greatly. Blue whales are dying in fishing nets and are being hunted illegally. Most scientists believe that there are only around 2,000 to 5,000 blue whales left in the ocean. So, remember our listening and speaking was on blue whales, so they told us information about it. Real information. Somebody researched this topic and they wrote this paragraph out for us. Like they said, if we ever thought the elephant was the biggest animal that's on a mammal that's on earth, it's not. It's the blue whale. They told us more about the whale. It can measure 70 to 80 feet in length. Um, the weight could be 90 to 150 tons. They're enormous. They told us they eat uh, tiny organisms such as pl plankton and krill. Remember, krill are like small shrimp like creatures, like prawns. Prawns are uh, shrimp are small prawns. Okay? They told us what the color of their skin was. Their groups are called pods. And now left in our ocean, there are only around 2,000 to 5,000 blue whales left. 2,000 to 5,000 is not a lot, guys. So please. Research this if you want to know more about blue whales. Let's go on. Okay, now we're going to go on to reading and viewing. So at the end of this, again, you're going to get a worksheet. You're going to read and you're going to um, understand what's written in the, in the information text and you're going to answer my questions. Okay, so let's go on. Right? We have reading and viewing is an, of an information text shall be done at the end of this as an assessment task, which is your work to be completed. Right. Remember to focus on the following when completing the task. Right. Number one is prediction, which is the title, heading, and pictures. Comment on the central idea of the text. When I ask you to write a summary, you'll comment on what the information text itself is about. Then use a mind map to summarize information. Okay. That's really easy. You can do that at the end. If you get stuck for any words, please make sure you use a dictionary, guys. We all have a dictionary. It is really important to check our spelling if you're not sure of the word. Or you could even ask an adult or your parents. Read the text and then answer questions based on it. So at the end, you'll get the text. You'll ask the questions based on it. Now we're going to go to the second half of the video, which is language and writing. So I'm, I am going to start with language first. And it's the harder part of the uh, harder part of English that most of my kids have a problem with. Okay. So for language, we're going to focus on finite and infinite verbs. It may sound simple. It actually is simple, but we have to remember the rules behind it. Subject, verb, agreement. Personification, proverbs, idioms, and similes. Okay, so those are really, really easy, guys. We just need to keep practicing if you're not sure what they are. Okay, and for writing, we're going to write an information text at the end of the lesson. Okay, let's go on. Okay, let's go on before we start finite and infinite verbs. What are verbs? We know this ourselves. A verb is a doing or action word. Our teachers tell us this all the time. Example, sit, stand, eat, jump, skip, jumping, any of those are words that we can really do an action to. Okay, example one, I did a sentence for you. John will stand to greet his teacher. The verb that he's going to really do is stand. Example two, Kerry loves to sleep all day. So Kerry loves to physically sleep all day. Okay, let's go on to finite and infinite verb. So a finite verb shows tense, past, present, future we're talking about. It shows, it, it changes by person or it could change by number of people. So a finite verb will be different when it comes to the tense it's in, whether past, present, or future, to the person it's in, or to the number of people we're talking about. I'll show you an example for you to understand better. An infinite verb has the word to in front of it. Like, I love to jump. I love to eat. He loves to sleep. 
Okay, let's go on. Okay, finite verbs. I have a definition here. A finite verb has a subject and shows tense. Remember, a subject is a person that we're talking about. It could be a person, it could be a thing, it could be an object. Right? The example below. The thief escaped again. So the subject we're talking about is who we're talking about. If here in this case is the thief. The finite verb would be escaped. The ED is showing past tense. The thief escaped again. So if we had to write that in another sentence, let's say, um, let's say in the present tense, the thief escapes. The thief escapes again. So the escaped ED will change to ED will change to S escape. So a finite verb changes according to your tense that is in. Okay. One more example is Sarah is crying with joy. Is is showing present tense, it's currently happening happening now. If we change that to past tense, you can say Sarah was crying with joy. So it's a finite verb because it changes with the tense that is in. Okay. Then I have another definition for you. Finite verbs show time or a verb which is limited by number, people, gender, and this is known as a finite verb, like I just explained to you. Let's look at this example again. Neha writes letters. They write letters. We have written letters. So the first one, Neha writes letters. It's in the, it's in the present tense, currently happening now. If I had to change the tense of that sentence, they write letters. That's not even changing the tense of the sentence. It's changing the number of people. Neha was one. They are many. We have written letters. Now they change the tense of the sentence to the past tense. So the word write would have changed to written. So a non-finite verb is very, very easy. It's not limited to all these place, number, people, tense. Example. I said it has the word to in front of it. Raymond tries to sing. We try to sing. They try to sing. So even if we change the tense or number of people, the word still stays the same. So again, finite verb changes with tense and number of people. Non-finite verb does not change with tense and has the word to in front of it. Okay, let's move on. Subject verb agreement. So the subject and the verb have to have an agreement. Now, what is this agreement? Right? Singular subjects use singular verbs. So plural subjects will have plural verbs. What does this mean? Let's read this carefully. Okay. Okay. So like I said, subject and verb have to have an agreement where singular subjects use singular verbs and plural subjects take plural verbs. What does this mean? The subject of a sentence is who or what, sorry, is who or what a sentence is about, like I said earlier. The verb is the action in the sentence, the doing word. The subject and verb must work together to agree. This makes sentence sound good. Rule number one, if the noun is singular, then you will add an S to the verb. Remember, noun is singular means one person. For example, the girl. One girl jumps, so the verb must have a S. So if there's one person, the verb takes an S. The girl jumps rope at recess. Recess is another word for break. Rule number two, if the noun is plural, then the verb has no S at the end. So if we're talking about more than one person in your subject, the girl, there's more than one girl there. So the verb does not take an S. So the girls jump rope and recess. So in actual fact, if you say it out in your mind, if you're writing a test, you can hear whether it sounds right or not. Okay? Here we have some exceptions. I and you are the exception. I and you are both singular subjects. I is one person and you is also one person. When you use them, you don't add an S to the verb. For example, I jump rope at recess or you jump rope at recess. So only I and you are the exceptions, guys. Please don't forget. So if it's singular, the verb takes an S. If it's plural, the verb does not take an S. And if it's I and you, it always does not have an S. Okay? Let's go on to tenses. Right? This is very, very easy. It's a recap from last year's work. Past tense, present tense, future tense. 
For example, let's look at the first one. Jenna walked to school every day. So you got an ED there, showing past tense, it happened before. Present tense, Jenna walks. So the verb changes to have an S with it. It's currently happening now. She walks to school every day. Let's go to future tense. Jenna will walk to school every day. Excuse me. So we have ED in the past tense, S in the present, will in the future. Remember, it could be anything. It could be different. Let's try next one. Sam played his guitar while people watched him. So the word played is plays in past tense and the word watch is in past tense with the ED. Let's change that to present tense. Sam plays his guitar while people watch him. So currently happening now. And then future tense, Sam will play his guitar while people watch him. Okay, so it's very, very easy. Past tense, you change your verb to be happening or to have happened already. Present tense is happening now and future tense is it will happen. Okay, let's go on to the, to the topic that my learners have a problem with, which is figures of speech. Let's look at the first one is personification. I want you to pay attention to the word personification itself. Person, you can see the word person in personification. That means it's personal, person qualities, people qualities. There's it here, giving a human trait to something that's non-human. So you're giving human qualities to something that's not a human, right? For example, the leaves danced. Dance is a human quality, humans dance. So the leaves danced in the wind. Next, the angry saw was visible. They're comparing a saw that a person had on his leg to being angry. Remember, only people can get angry. So using human qualities and giving it to something that's not human. Okay? And the last one, my heart was competing with my head. Competing is like having a competition. Remember, that's a human quality. So giving a non-living organism or thing, a human quality is known as personification. Next is very, very simple. It's a simile. A simile either compares two things using the word like or as. So if you see it in the sentence and it has like or as, you just know it's a simile. For example, Busy as a bee, sparkle like diamonds, hungry as a bear, flat as a pancake, or hard as a rock. So as you see as or like, please just know it's a simile. Let's move on to the next one, which is an idiom. Remember, an idiom is an expression that doesn't mean what the words say. So it's a set of words that mean something else, right? For example, she spilled the beans. The person really didn't go and spill beans all over the floor, right? It's used as an idiom to say something else. Here's it here. She talked too much or she could have told someone a secret. Spilled the beans means they give up a secret, okay? Let's go on to the next one, which is famous proverb, right? So proverb is a topic. A proverb is a saying that can be one or two line long, uh, one or two lines long, sorry, which is generally known among the people. So it's basically like passed on what our parents or grandparents used to say, right? I'm just gonna go over two examples. A chain is only as strong as its weakest link. I'm sure you've heard that before. A chain is only as strong as its weakest link. That means a team of group is only as strong as its weakest member. Remember, in a group, not everybody's the same. We all are different. If a person is not performing in a group, the whole group can suffer. We know that we do group work every day. Right? And let's do the last one. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. We hear this all the time. We see it in movies. And it means people have a tendency to think more often about someone who is away from them. So if you and your friend, if your friend went to a new school, absence make the heart grow fonder, meaning your friend is not with you anymore in the class, so you miss them more. Right? Let's go on to the next section. Okay, now we're going to go on to writing and presenting. So I am also going to reiterate what I said in my previous videos. Why is writing so important? Okay, number one, it increases our communication skills. The way we speak, someone can read our article, they can understand what we're trying to say. Number two, writing will be used throughout our lives. 
trust me guys writing will be used throughout our lives okay number three it incorporates our intelligence education and thinking skills so it mixes all of that and it brings out our creativity so it allows us to write articles blogs newspaper articles um, whatever else stories poems we could use writing to be creative show our creative side okay so for writing and presenting i'm going to go over the writing process again no matter what you're writing remember my writing process guys in every single paper you're going to use the writing process the first one is brainstorming ideas using your mind map we discussed it you know it two is writing your first draft so after you've done your brainstorming you write your first draft then you go on to revising that draft which is editing editing it next you proofread that draft and after you've done proofreading it or someone proofreads it for you you write your final draft and you present it and this is the example of the mind map which i had for my previous lesson so please guys remember learn your language skills practice your language skills practice your writing so i am going to give you an activity at this is the end of my powerpoint presentation i am going to give you an activity um, in the comments column you're going to complete it you're going to do it i will post the comments um, the answer sorry for you so please like share invite your friends to view our page the lessons are very very simple if you have any questions please leave them below if you have a topic that you want me to cover also please comment below parents or learners so anyway guys like share and pay attention to all my videos because i am going to be uploading another video today where um, there is a competition going to be run and there is a cash voucher to win guys so you have to watch all my videos in order for you to get all the answers to these questions that i'm going to post so hey guys good luck take care remember um tomorrow i'll be posting the worksheet for you to complete and i'll be posting the answers for my previous video thank you